Hi there, I'm on the floor today. Welcome to Mike Text It Out. I'm Mike and I'm on the floor today because I'm talking about the Win 3 and an eGPU and the eGPU is hooked up in here. So I'm just going to sit on the floor in front of it and talk about it. But before we could talk about it, we have to figure out what an eGPU is. And the funny thing is, I figured that it was more common than it actually is. Like none of my friends, including the techie ones, knew what an eGPU was. So I found that very fascinating. So an eGPU is like an external GPU. So you have a Thunderbolt cable. So this one is a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU enclosure. This supports Thunderbolt 4, but I didn't find any enclosures that said they support Thunderbolt 4. And there doesn't seem to be a huge difference as far as speed. So maybe that's why there aren't any Thunderbolt 4 enclosures yet. Thunderbolt typically used over a USB-C connector allows you to do things such as connect an eGPU or a super high powered dock that can do like power delivery and a bunch of other stuff. But the coolest thing is the GPU, let's be honest about it. Here is the eGPU I'm using. This is a Sonnet 650 watt GPU enclosure. I actually got this on eBay, open box. And the reason I got this 650 watt one was it was on sale for, not really on sale, but it's 209. I think it's close to being discontinued because the current versions are 750 watts and the new one's like 300. So this was the cheapest one that I could find that was technically in new condition. Typically an enclosure will run like three to $500 at the high end. And they're also just straight up GPUs. Like you get an enclosure with the built-in GPU. And of course those are gonna vary in price depending on how powerful the GPU is. But I like something like this better because then you can upgrade the GPU over time. But those are typically the two flavors that they come in. You can either get an enclosure or a GPU built into the enclosure. This one is a Thunderbolt one. They do have some that work over other formats like PCI, like you can get these crazy adapters and plug it into an M.2 slot like that guy did for the Steam Deck video where he used an eGPU. But Thunderbolt is just super simple because like I said, it works over a USB-C connector. So you just have one cable that you plug in and this is how the back of it looks. So you put your graphics card in here and this is just a normal two slot 1080 Ti that I have in here and then you plug your monitor or TV or whatever into the ports on the back of the graphics card. So this is a pretty big card and it fit in here with no issues. I actually still have a little bit of space left at the top where I could put something like a longer card in here. On the other side, we just have an SFX power supply, like a one that you would put in a smaller PC. And again, this is 650 watts. So this is more than enough power for my 1080 Ti plus power delivery to the GPD-1 because Thunderbolt not only transfers the data from the GPU, but it also keeps this thing powered so I don't have to have any kind of external power source connected to it either. And then there's a 120 millimeter fan here just for graphics card cooling and then this little board down here. So there's just a little board at the bottom that just has a PCI Express slot. And then on the back here, you have your Thunderbolt. So this just converts it to Thunderbolt so you can use it with your laptop or whatever device you have that supports a Thunderbolt's graphics card. But this thing's pretty cool. I like the fact that you can just stick whatever GPU in here you want to and just call it a day. But that's essentially what an eGPU is. It allows you to take a desktop graphics card and put it in an enclosure like this. Or like I said, you can buy a pre-built one with the graphics card already included. The reason I didn't go with something like that was because for one, I already had an extra graphics card lying around. And two, sometimes those graphics cards are weird and use proprietary connectors or the enclosure will be weird to have some proprietary stuff with it like proprietary ports in the back for that graphics card so that usually means that you can't use the enclosure for a different card or you can't use the card in like a regular desktop pc so i just didn't want to deal with that so personally i think just getting an enclosure is the best way to go but there are other enclosures with better features than this for instance some of them will have a hub on the back like it'll have some usb ports and an ethernet port so you really have like an all-in-one experience so you can literally just connect one cable and you can have you know if you want a wire ethernet connection or an external hard drive or whatever connected to it so that way when you dock it like you come home and this is basically a desktop at that point the recommended one seems to be the razor core that one 
has a hub built in, but it was a little bit more expensive. And for some reason for the win, from what I've read, it seems to be hit or miss. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I didn't want to risk any compatibility issues. This one for sure, I know worked. So this device, the GPD Win 3, or any device that uses Intel's 11th or 12th gen processors, it has Thunderbolt built in automatically. It used to be a separate chip, but now it's just built into the SOC. So that's one of the benefits that I mentioned in last week's video was being able to hook up an eGPU. But of course we can't take this and just connect it to a TV and expect this to work. We need some accessories with it. So for one, this thing gets really hot when you have it connected to the TV. And originally I have this laying down I tried to bend it a little bit, but even with me having it like slightly off the ground, like I stuck the PlayStation Classic under it. Look, this thing is not useful any other way. At least it could be a vent for my GPD win. But yes, yeah, so I stuck the PlayStation Classic under it originally, but I went and 3D printed a dock. So this little dock I found on Tinkercad and someone that had the exact same problem as me, which they had the official case, which makes it not fit and the provided dock, they made this and I stole it and this works perfectly. So I can just set this here and it's got space in the back for the vent to suck in air. And it's far enough off the ground where I don't have to worry about it overheating as much. So this thing is awesome. I will link this in the description. I don't remember the name of the creator, but if you have a GPD Win 3 with the case, you're looking for just a quick and easy dock that will fit it, this works great. Second, I needed a mouse and keyboard solution. And since I'm gonna be using this in our second room, technically Jeff's office, I didn't wanna have like a big mouse and keyboard sitting there taking up all the space. So I actually bought this on Amazon for $12 and this thing is awesome. First of all, it has a backlight. So when you hit the buttons, it lights up, which is pretty cool. The trackpad is small, there's nothing spectacular, but it works for navigating around the OS when you really need to. And then the buttons are like, you can hear it like, super clicky and satisfying and there's enough spacing where you don't accidentally press the wrong button and this just works over one usb port it charges via micro usb and like i said it was 12 bucks and it even has a replaceable battery i don't know what kind of battery this is but it's easily replaceable if you ever need to replace it so this is a pretty cool device it's something that's great if you just want something to navigate windows or your os with but you don't really need to use it for gaming so I'm not gonna be using that for gaming. I actually picked up another Xbox controller. I got the blue and white Xbox Series controller, which I love this color. I have this paired just over Bluetooth to the win. So that way when I dock it, I can just go ahead and turn it on and it's already paired. The last thing is, this is just a cheap Anker USB 3 extension cable. And the win actually has a USB 3 port on the top. So I just pop this in here whenever I wanna use it for the mouse and keyboard. And the reason I'm using the extender cable is because I hate really trying to pry those little USB adapters out every time I don't want to use them anymore. Plus, if I decide that I want to do like an external hard drive in the future, then it'll be easier to plug this in here and just plug this into the win. So putting all of this together is pretty seamless. So I just plug in the one cable. The GPU turns on. So this particular model powers on when you plug the cable in, which I think is pretty cool. And I actually hit the task manager button. So let me hit cancel. But yeah, it's actually pretty fast. So this is what it looks like in the OS. I have it, of course, blown up a little bit because I'm not gonna be sitting this close to the TV, so I like the UI to be a little bit bigger. But yeah, this thing works pretty well. So I'm not gonna go over benchmarks here because I really don't do that on my channel, but I will preface this by saying with higher end GPUs, you generally lose about 30% performance in comparison to having that GPU in a desktop because it's sending this over a single cable. Also, you lose additional performance if you want to play games directly on the GPD Win with the screen, because it's sending that data back to the Win screen instead of outputting it directly from the GPU to your monitor or TV. It is a little bit slower, but I personally found that it actually works fine. Like, <laughs> since I'm running at 720p anyway, I was able to just crank up the graphics and it worked perfectly fine. And for me, that's been the story of this GPU. So I've been running games at 4K because in this instance, it's actually better to run it at a higher resolution or more demanding settings. So you're putting more stress on the GPU than the CPU of the win, especially because this is a laptop CPU. So I run everything at 4K, typically at medium settings and everything's been running pretty smoothly. Now I will say that I noticed dips a little bit more frequently than when we had this graphics card in a computer, but 
as far as being able to just plug this in and run games docked at 4K, it's been overall great. Like, it's worked way better than I expected because I've heard some horror stories about <laughs> eGPUs not being that great. But the point of me really getting this enclosure was so I'd have another computer in this room where Jeff has his computer. We can come in here and play games together like we started playing It Takes Two over the weekend. All the games that I've tried up here have worked surprisingly well. I really felt like I was playing on a full desktop. So it's pretty cool that you can connect this GPU with one cable and just get a full desktop experience like this. With that being said, I guess we have to answer the question of if it's actually worth doing an eGPU. That really depends on the person. So if you have something like the Win 3, it's really compact enough where you can have it like in a small area and like, you know, if you wanna play games or whatever, or browse the web on it, it's a handheld. So you have your handheld and then when you get to your destination, you have a full PC. Or in my scenario, like maybe you just wanna have a living room PC that you use occasionally or somewhere around the house or you know, maybe this is your only PC and you want to have a more powerful experience when you dock it and you can do other things on it like video editing or photo editing. But during the day, I don't know, maybe you just throw it in a bag and take it with you. That's the kind of thing that's cool about these little PCs. And this is kind of a, a way to overcome its limitations. Of course, you could always get a laptop, especially considering that something like the GPD Win or Max or 3, around a thousand dollars, same thing with the One X Player, the Intel version of that. And then plus when you factor in the cost of the GPU enclosure and the GPU, then you're looking at probably around fifteen to $1,600. And arguably you could just get a laptop with a dedicated GPU at that point. But it is gonna be a bigger device. It's really a different device from these kind of handheld gaming PCs. Or maybe you like super slim laptops because a lot of those just have integrated graphics and this is also another use case for that. Like you want a laptop that's super small and portable, but you want to be able to do more graphically demanding stuff when maybe you're at home. So from that aspect, I still think that it's worth it. And I think it's kind of cool to have a Switch-like experience where you can dock this, but instead of you know playing the game just upscaled, you're actually playing a more powerful version of the game. The only bad thing is, since this is Windows, a lot of times, depending on the game, it will just keep the settings from whatever the last device you played it on was. For instance, I loaded up Elden Ring earlier and I last played it on <laughs> the Win handheld. So I loaded up in like the corner in a tiny 720p window on the TV and I had to go to the settings to change the resolution. And I'm sure I'm gonna have an issue with it when I go back to play it handheld again, so. There are small things like that. But other than that, I really had no issues with it. Like you plug it in. The weird thing is you have to download the graphics drivers. Like this is a desktop graphics card. When you disconnect it, it's pretty much like disconnecting any other USB device. It just flips back over to the internal graphics at that point. So for the most part, it's pretty seamless aside from when Windows doesn't act right, but that's just Windows. But yeah, overall, I think in the scenario where you have something like this or like a super slim laptop, you don't want to give up that form factor, but you do want the ability to have a more powerful graphics experience when you're at home, then something like this is gonna be worth it. Overall, so far, I've had a pretty awesome experience with it. And you know what else is awesome? Getting off this floor. And that's what I'm doing because I'm bringing this video to a conclusion. But if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to get notified when I drop a video or a live stream. And always do at least two things at the same time.